Next from Springfield, Supreme Court Chief Justice Rita Garman speaks at a dinner honoring judges and attorneys who have served in Sangamon County for at least 50 years, discussing advances made in the legal profession and the future of it. This runs about 16 minutes. So please help me welcome Chief Justice Rita Garman. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here with you this evening, and I appreciate the wonderful introduction by my friend Carol Pope and your warm, uh, your warm greeting of me. Uh, and I'm really honored to follow in the footsteps of your previous keynote speakers, uh, Judge Abner Mikma and my dear colleague, uh, Mary Jane Tice, who was the speaker, I think it was the last go round. And I certainly want to thank Judge April Trumper for her kind invitation uh, to speak tonight. Uh, before I begin my remarks, I, I was, when we said the pledge to the flag, it brought to mind something that uh, had happened to me. Now, lots, you know, lawyers and judges sometimes get strange questions. And of course, people expect that we know the answer to everything. Um, and of course, probably some people try to fake that they know the answer to everything, but we don't. But uh, I think when I was running for the Supreme Court, I had this fellow write me a letter and demand that I do something about a flag, the American flag, that had fringe on it. He claimed it was illegal and improper to display the flag with fringe. So, of course, what do good lawyers and judges do? We researched it. So, you'll be happy to know that is in compliance because if the president says you can have fringe on the American flag, you can have fringe on the American flag. So I know that bit of trivia is something you'll all want to take with you uh, <laughs> for the future. But uh, I often advise law students and young lawyers that as members of a learned profession, we are obligated to participate in professional organizations and to engage in public service. The Profession of Leadership Foundation, which brings together several professional organizations to recognize leaders in our profession and to support worthy causes, such as the Illinois Bar Foundation, validates that important message. As lawyers, we have many opportunities to exhibit leadership, not only in law firms and in the other workplaces, like government agencies and the court system, but in our professional organizations and in our communities. I'm always impressed when I see the number of lawyers on the rosters of charitable organizations, cultural organizations, and other community organizations. Perhaps it's because we lawyers are fundamentally problem solvers that we gravitate to these positions. But whatever the reason, members of the legal profession contribute to their communities in many important and different ways. Tonight, we honor Illinois lawyers who have served their clients, their communities, and their profession for over 50 years. To each of the honorees, I extend my heartfelt congratulations. There are certainly too many for me to mention individually, but please know I am very sincere in my congratulations to each one of you. I'm very fortunate that I get to serve with one of the honorees, Justice Lloyd Carmeier. It is an honor and a privilege to work with Judge Justice Carmeier uh, on the Supreme Court uh, for, the, for the last 10 years and now for 10 years into the future. Our honorees have witnessed great changes in our profession over the past five decades. Now, I don't want you to think that that's something that I'm not that familiar with because I'm just a kid. I've only got 47 years of experience. <laughs> But I, too, have had the opportunity to witness many of these changes. Over the years, the law itself has changed. There's been a massive increase in the number of statutes and administrative regulations. Common law doctrines have been codified by statute or rule. For example, the rules of evidence, which are a matter of common law 50 years ago, 
have been codified in the, by the federal and state rules of evidence. In addition, entire new bodies of law, such as environmental law and cyber law, have emerged. Legal research has been made more efficient and more thorough by computer-aided researching. Computers have altered the practice of law in other ways, allowing lawyers to use templates for legal documents and to communicate via email. Pleadings and other court documents can be filed electronically, and we look forward to the day when our court system is paperless and we'll be able to seamlessly process uh, documents for the court. Today, uh, depositions can be conducted via video conference. But the most important change, I think, in our profession has not been a matter of technology. In my opinion, the greatest change has been in the composition of the bench and bar. Our, our profession has become more diverse and more inclusive, and I think that's the greatest advancement in the last 50 years. It will do more than any new technology to serve the cause of justice, to provide equal access to the justice system, and to, to improve our public perception of our profession. I was privileged to be on the cutting edge of change as one of very few women in my law school class. As, and as Carol's told you, I was the first woman to serve at every level of the judiciary until I entered the Supreme Court conference room in 2001. And I was welcomed there by our, my dear colleague, the late Justice Mary Ann McMorrow. In, by contrast, in the last election, as of the last election, 31% of the judges in Illinois are women. When I became a judge in 1974, there were less than 10 women statewide. Illinois can be proud of the progress that we've made because it reflects the changing composition of our law school student bodies. We are educating a new generation of lawyers and they, it accurately reflects what our citizenry looks like. But diversity in the profession is not just a matter of gender. We must encourage and support entry into the profession by individuals from an entire spectrum of Illinois citizens. Inclusiveness to most of us means gender, race, religion, sexual orientation. But it also means having lawyers with backgrounds in science and technology, as well as history and political science. It means having lawyers and judges from big cities and small towns and farms. In short, it means creating a legal community that's reflective of the communities in which we live and practice. I urge the leaders of the various organizations that make up the Profession of Leadership Foundation to actively reach out to this diverse group of young lawyers who are now entering the practice of law because they represent the future of our profession. 50 years from now, when some of them are being recognized for their leadership, I hope they'll live up to the standards set by those that we've honored here today. On the topic of leadership itself, there is no doubt that lawyers are often called upon to serve in leadership positions. We've run law firms, businesses, government agencies, nonprofit agencies. 25 of our 44 presidents have been lawyers, including two of the last three. In the last Congress, 55 senators and 156 representatives were lawyers. Yet lawyers are generally not trained in the art of leadership, even though no profession provides more leaders than our own. Perhaps our law schools do not concentrate on leadership development because we tend to think of effective leaders as those that are born with certain gifts. Indeed, famed author and management consultant Peter Drucker once said that leadership can't be uh, taught or learned. But I have to disagree. While I'm sure that there are certain personality traits that are conducive to successful leadership. I am convinced that just as we learn to communicate effectively as legal writers and how to present an effective oral argument, 
we lawyers can develop our leadership skills. Leadership, like any other skill, has its own body of literature. And frankly, it's a bit overwhelming. Such, some such volumes fall under the category of pop culture. And one wonders how valuable they might be. A book titled, If Aristotle Ran General Motors, is a bestseller. Then there are leadership fads. For a while, everyone was trying to manage by objectives or lead by kindness when they weren't focusing on the zen of leadership. Those who write about leadership can't even seem to agree on a definition of the term. And there are dozens of those theories of leadership, each with its own set of important skills or attributes. I'm no expert by any means on the scholarly work into leadership, but I found myself in the position of being a subordinate to an effective leader. And like most of you, I've also experienced situations in which the person would not be very good or adept at leadership. The one thing I have learned from these situations is that a leader is not made by his or her title or position. A boss, manager, or other superior that is not a leader uh, unless his sub they are not a leader unless their subordinates become enthusiastic followers. In the end, leadership requires a relationship. It requires a relationship of trust and respect and confidence. It's not about drama or charisma. Genuine leadership is practical, it's mundane, it's competent. True leaders are ethical and honest. They're self-aware and exhibit self-control. They're not only technically competent, they also have a vision of success that they can communicate to others. In the literature on leadership, you can find countless lists of ideal traits of an effective leader. I'd like to focus on four such traits, which I did not obtain from a list, but which I developed from my own experience, both professionally and as a parent of two children. First, a successful leader is a good communicator. You can't lead others unless you can clearly and effectively communicate to them not only the goal that you want to achieve, but the rationale for that goal. Not just where we're going, but why it's important that we go there. Second, a successful leader exhibits patience. It's not easy to remain calm and to wait for the results from others, but it is essential. I often remind myself of the words of Aristotle. Patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Third, a successful leader has the ability to delegate responsibility. If one would lead, one must abandon the if you want it done right, do it yourself mindset. In the words of my granddaughter, my three-year-old granddaughter's favorite song, let it go. <laughs> Finally, a successful leader must have a sense of humor. Always helps, including the ability to laugh at yourself. If you can't accept a setback with a positive attitude, your followers are, not, are going to be afraid to accept responsibility and to try to achieve your, the goals that you've set. Nothing undermines group success like a grump. The profession of leadership foundation and the organizations that compose it are all committed to encouraging leadership in the legal profession. And I salute you for that effort. And I urge you to continue and to especially reach out to the next generation of young lawyers from which our professional and community leaders will certainly emerge. The 37 individuals honored here tonight have in various ways exhibited all of the traits that I've mentioned. They've enjoyed professional success and they've earned numerous awards and honors and they've served as leaders in our communities. So tonight, to those of you honored, we honor you for your leadership and your dedication over the past 50 years, and we honor you and praise you for the contribution you've made to bring our profession into the 21st century. We also look forward to your continued involvement in the profession as you continue to practice as you continue to lead in your community. 
and as you mentor to the next generation of lawyers. So from myself and my colleagues on the Illinois Supreme Court, and on behalf of all of our all fellow lawyers here, I bring each of you a warm congratulations. And thank you for inviting me. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.